What's going on everybody? My name is Greg Peters. You're watching Car Passion. I'm here with my friend Matt today and we are going to teach you guys how to build this DIY diffuser for your Miata and as you can see it came out pretty epic. As far as what I know about diffusers, I know they stop air from getting caught in your bumper yes. and the air coming off the top of the car and from under the bottom of the car is supposed to meet at a certain angle or something like that. Yeah, so we're not going to get there with a DIY diffuser on a street car. We're just not. The right eye is not right, the attack angle is not right. But what we can do is sort of reduce that parachute effect that you get from a bumper that doesn't have a bumper cut, and then we can take it away even more by kissing this up tight to the bumper, covering the muffler, and as that bumper and diffuser ramp up, we're gonna pull air out from under the car, expand it to create a vacuum effect, and in theory, what we're gonna do is suck more air out from under the car, which is going to suck the car to the ground and create downforce. Are we going to do that as efficiently as a race car might that sits a half inch off the ground? Probably not, but it's going to get us all the street cred in the world. It's going to get us some functionality and it's going to look way better than those things you can buy on eBay that are six inches long and just make you look like a fool. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I met Matt at a Miata meet, and although I was drawn in by the perfect red paint on his NB, coming to the back of the car, he just had an epic looking diffuser, and he said, yeah, I built it myself with basic materials, and that's what we have here, and this thing's gonna look freaking epic when it goes on the car, and like he was talking about, this might not be a perfect wind tunnel tested diffuser the way that a race car would have it, but in theory, it should have some functionality, and it's gonna look killer, as you guys are gonna see, so. Without further ado, let's build this thing. All right, let's jump into building this custom fit DIY diffuser, shall we? Now, the best part about building your own diffuser is number one, you can make it fit perfect to your car. If you have a bumper cut, if you have a custom exhaust, that was always my biggest fear of buying an off-the-shelf diffuser is I was always afraid either it wasn't going to fit or it's just going to hang way too low and not look good. And the other benefit is this thing is going to be cheaper than basically any off-the-shelf diffuser. Now you're probably going to want to have a friend help you out with this. You'll see later in the video, it definitely helps to have two people when we're trying to wrestle this thing together. The first thing you need to do is mark up and cut out the main base plate for your diffuser. And this is going to vary based on your setup. Now you can see us using Matt's diffuser to get an idea and mock this up. Obviously you don't need a spare diffuser to do this. You just need to measure from your mounting point, which in my case are the rear holes on the subframe, and then measure back however far you want the diffuser to hang off the back of the car. For the width, I just measured how much space is between my exhaust tips, which was 36 inches, and decided we should make the diffuser about 35 inches wide, which will leave half an inch between each exhaust tip. Now, keep in mind, the exhaust gets very hot and it will melt this. This is ABS plastic. It's 3 16 of an inch thick or five millimeters. And I'll link down below what exactly I used here. I'll link as much of this stuff as possible down below in the description so you guys get a little bit more information about this. So the first thing we're gonna do is cut out the main plate here. And if you're building it just like this, you need to factor in the length for the mounting tabs. And before we cut the bottom, we drilled these three quarter inch holes here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna round the edges of the mounting tabs and it's going to not create stress risers. If you just cut this at a 90 degree angle, those tabs are gonna be way more prone to cracking where if you have a curved edge like this, which you'll see in a second how this turns out, it distributes that load better and it's not gonna crack as easily. So it looks something like this, and then just jump in there with the jigsaw and finish our cut up. Now when we finish up that bottom cut, you're left with these nice tabs that have rounded edges. Now everything is gonna look pretty rough around the edges here. I find that a file really works best for taking all those burrs off, or if you have a Dremel with a little sanding drum on it. The next thing we're gonna do is cut out the fins. Now this is another awesome part about a custom diffuser is you can draw these things out any shape you want. And I suggest you maybe draw one out, cut it out, put it, you know, mock it up to the back of the car, see how it looks, see if it's what you like. And all we're doing here is just clamping a mock-up fin to the main sheet, drawing out an outline with Sharpie, and we're gonna cut that out. Now, one important thing I will mention here, 
Once you decide on your fin design and you cut out the first fin and you are happy with it, I suggest you use that original number one fin to make the outline for all of the future fins. If you build some huge diffuser with eight to 10 fins on it, and every fin you cut out, you use that one for the next outline, your first and your eighth fin are possibly gonna look very different. So it's important to use that first one over and over. That way you'll get the most consistent results. Also, if you go with the ABS plastic that's textured on one side and smooth on the other side like this, be conscious of which way you're doing the fin outline because as we did here, I cut out five fins and two of them had the finish on the wrong side and I wanted the rough finish to all you know, face the same direction. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna score up marks for these little slots. Now these slots need to be just larger than whatever L brackets you're using. And again, I'll link down below the stuff that I used, but you might have slightly different things and or you you know you might spot something in here that you really don't like how we did this diffuser but that is the beauty of DIY you can take this design and let your creativity go go wild you know make a make one that's twice as good as this so we're just marking out here where each of these slits is going to go and you can see on Matt's diffuser here the side facing bolts actually don't have any nuts on them and that's because he drilled through this ABS with the correct size drill bit so that threading the screw in threads into the plastic itself and it's kind of like a lock nut. He's been running this thing for thousands of miles and has not lost a single piece of hardware. So this is actually a pretty effective way of doing it. All right, now that every slit location is marked out for the L bracket, it is time for the tedious job of cutting out a bajillion of these little slits. And as you do them, it is a very good idea to drop your L brackets in and just make sure they all go in because you got your tools out, you got your bench set up. If the brackets don't go into some of these, it's real quick to just buzz a little extra off. And we also need to punch out the holes for the front mounting points. It is also best wherever possible to ovalize your holes. And what that's gonna let you do is perfect the fitment of the diffuser. So you don't necessarily have to drill these holes completely perfect. I can almost guarantee if you're freehanding this thing, kind of how we are, if you were to just drill the holes, that diffuser is not gonna sit perfect. And you wanna design as much adjustability into this thing as possible. Now we need to take a bracket and mark out where every single screw hole is going to go in the main plate of this diffuser. Once those are all drilled out, you can install all of these L brackets. And these brackets obviously are what is going to hold the fins onto the main plate. The next set of holes you'll need to drill are in the fins themselves. And these are pretty important because the spacing on these is gonna determine how well the plate fits to the fins and how little the air gap is. How do you do that, might you ask? Okay, this is where it's gonna really help to have two people. Because what you wanna do is kind of mock up how this fin is going to bend the plate and then mark off each place where you're going to drill a hole. And the better job you do here, the better it's going to fit. Now, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to show you later in the video what I did to make this thing look even better because I did end up with some air gaps. Now, if you're using the method that we use here where you're not going to have any nuts on the sideways facing bolts, you're actually going to thread them into the ABS plastic. It really works out best if you drill the holes and run the screw through the hole before you go to assemble this thing because when you're you know forcefully holding this whole thing together if the threads are already in the abs plastic that screw is going to track in a lot easier and it'll just make the assembly process go smoother now you have to install all the nuts on these bolts before you do the fins otherwise everything starts getting into each other's way we use ni nylon uh, lock nuts here just because um, maybe it's overkill maybe it's not i don't know the cost on these does add up definitely above normal nuts but it just seemed appropriate to use these here Next, we're gonna go one by one on these fins and fully bolt them into the diffuser. And again, this is where it's gonna help to have a friend really clamp this thing together and get the bolts in. And just repeat that for every single fin. And the main structure of this thing is pretty much assembled. So the next part is going to be actually mounting it to the car. So we're gonna have six different mounting points to the car. Um, 
four would probably work, but it's like, if you do have an issue with the plastic tabs breaking, then I don't know, I just think it's better to have more places. We're gonna mock this thing up here and oh my God, look how epic that thing looks. It's not even fixed to the car yet, but holy crap, that looks sweet for mounting the rear part of the diffuser. The tow hook brackets on the Miata just so happen to be a perfect place for this, but we still have to make a connection between the diffuser and those tow hook brackets. So the best way that Matt found to do this is with this um, metal stuff. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's like angle iron, but it's not angle and it's also not iron. It's just these steel strips basically. You can get them at Home Depot, you can get them at Lowe's, but you just take this bad boy and you cut it and then you bend it. It doesn't get much simpler than that. And then we're gonna put a couple holes in it there and we're gonna bolt this to the diffuser. You can see there, there wasn't quite enough angle on that, so it's gonna have to be bent a little bit more for the correct fitment. Then you'll need to drill another hole where we're gonna mount that actually to the car. So this is somewhat what the finished bracket looks like for the rear mounting system. And those upper holes, again, I recommend you ovalize those because that is going to be the height adjustment for your diffuser. So that's gonna allow you to really get it up tight to the bumper if that's what you want. All right, the next step here is is to drill a gigantic hole into your Miata. You've seen me do that a few times here on the channel, so you should be comfortable with it by now. Again, I'm gonna reiterate this. You don't have to do it exactly like this. There are other ways to mount it. There are other places to do it. I'm just showing you one way, all right? So you push the diffuser up, the bullet goes right through like that, and then you tighten it down, and look at that, you got a mounted diffuser. So right here, it does only have four mounting points, but I'll show you how I'm gonna get those extra two mounting points a little bit later in the video. All right, Matt, well, thank you for lending your knowledge in your workspace. No problem. And this diffuser that's come out absolutely beautiful. I'm gonna do some finishing touches on this. There's uh, some like little gaps and stuff like that. So I'll show you guys how to really clean it up and make a finished product. I'm assuming there's gonna be some Miatas running around now with your DIY diffuser uh, on there. I so. hope so, don't disappoint me. Don't make the short ones, go all the way forward. Do it right. If you guys end up building one of these for your car, don't forget to tag Matt and I. I'm gonna leave his Instagram down below so you can follow him and his NB EFR, or I should say his VVT EFR build. I know you guys love the VVT EFR builds. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you guys in just a second back at the VVT studio. So this thing is basically built now, but as you can see, it needs some fine tuning. Now, it looks extra bad right here because of the way that I'm filming it and how the light is coming from outside through the fins, but it does a good job at illustrating the gaps that are in these things. And when you're cutting everything out by hand, it's kind of hard to avoid this. So, what you're gonna do is take some black silicone and you're just gonna lay down a bead into that gap. And once you lay that bead down, you can take a flathead screwdriver and basically push the silicone into the gap and smooth it out and it honestly starts to look really good. Now, yes, it also does look very DIY, but that's kind of the point of this whole thing. I think it looks pretty race car like this and once it's on the car, it's, I mean, unless you climb onto the thing with the magnifying glass, it does not look bad. I think, I think it looks excellent, but you guys are gonna see once it's on the car how good it looks. Now, what a difference just siliconing those gaps has made. Look at this thing. It's like it was just molded out of one giant piece of plastic. Next thing I did here is I did a much larger ovalization on these because the diffuser was hanging lower than I wanted it to, and this is gonna give me the ability to raise it up way higher. Okay, some of you observant people out there have probably noticed that my car is only single exhaust in this video, and and you're probably wondering where the heck the other half of my exhaust went. Well, my driveway is really steep and I scraped it several times to where it cracked and I had to remove it. So I need to get that welded back to the cutout. But anyways, where the exhaust used to be here, it melted the bumper and that's annoying. So I'm gonna fix not only this, but something that's annoyed me for quite a while and that's the fact that my bumper cut is so rough if you actually take a close look at it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hack this thing off here and give it a little buzz buzz. I know some of you guys are cringing, but hey, this ain't no show car, all right? And I'm gonna add this AutoZone Special Automotive Edge Trim to the bumper cut. I don't know why I didn't do this when I first did the bumper cut, but it looks epic. Look it, go around this corner right here, Bam! It looks factory, it looks so much better. Even if you have a rough bumper cut, 
this thing, it just covers up your mistakes. Another addition that I'll be making here is applying this giant rectangle of DEI heat reflective material. Some of you guys probably noticed on Matt's diffuser that there was a little bit of melting action below his muffler. Luckily the muffler on my car is quite a bit smaller and higher up than his, so I don't think it'll be an issue, but I don't really wanna take that chance. Now you can see here the beauty of the adjustable rear brackets. I can just push this diffuser all the way up to the bumper. I did leave a tiny gap there to maybe let some of the heat escape from the muffler. I don't know what I'm doing really, but I figured maybe it wouldn't be the best idea to actually seal it off. But it is very snugged up to the bumper and then you can also see the front mounting points where I have it bolted to the subframe. And I still have a factory 1.6 liter subframe brace in place. Now onto our sixth and most street cred adding mounting points, the adjustable splitter rods. These are pretty simple to install on the diffuser side. You just drill a hole the correct size through here, and then you have to figure out where to mount it to your car. Now the NBs are actually a little bit easier to do this with because they have this dropped sheet metal on both sides of the trunk where the NA only has it on one side. And that's what you're looking at here. Just drilled a tiny hole through there. The splitter rod goes through it and you install a nut from the other side. On the other side, this bad boy is just fixed to the exhaust heat shield and it's not really supporting any weight. It's just like an additional mounting point and it's actually pretty solid. So yeah, that's probably not the most kosher part of this entire install, but it is sturdy, I will say that. And once you put these splitter rods on the front leading edges of the diffuser, it makes the whole thing feel a lot more solid. And that, guys, is how you build an epic DIY diffuser. Let's go take a look at this thing in the sunlight. guys well i think this came out absolutely sick amazing i'm 100 percent satisfied with it matt and i spent the better part of a day just getting everything cut out assembling it and getting it roughly fit to the car and then i spent another day today doing all the fine tuning stuff doing uh, the silicone and the air gaps and getting it perfectly level and at the right height and just getting everything trimmed up so it was as perfect as i could possibly make it so i would say this is definitely a weekend project you really want to have a friend helping you, especially when you're bolting the whole thing together. But I think it came out awesome. And like I talked about, you can build this thing for about $100. Some of the things are going to vary a little bit uh, as far as the kind of hardware you get, the heat shielding you get. Everything is going to make that price vary a little bit. But the exact way that I built it came out to right around $120. But, you know, getting stuff online, you know, you know how it goes, guys. Prices are just different everywhere, but I just want to give you a rough idea that you can build a diffuser for your car and you don't have to spend three, four hundred dollars on off the shelf diffusers. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. And frankly, this is making the front of the car look a little bland. So I think that is an area I'm going to focus on next. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new. Smash that like button if you learned something and I will catch you in the next one. Peace out.